Hey everyone, welcome to the recordings from the Job Ready International Student eSummit. This online webinar was so much fun, packed full of incredible information to help you, especially international students, get job ready and be prepared for your job search here in America. So excited to share these videos with you. And don't forget our summer course, Job Ready in 10 Weeks, is about to start. Don't forget to register because it's going to help you guys even more in your job search here in America. This presentation is my presentation, and I'm so excited because it's all about how to network during times of social distancing. So I'll give you guys lots of incredible examples, one just on how to network online virtually and also help you understand what networking really is and give you guys a good definition of networking. So grab some chai and enjoy this presentation. All right, everybody. I am so excited to be uh, presenting again. Um, I get so many questions about networking. Um, I'm Rob Adams. Uh, and a couple of years ago, I started this fun adventure called Chai and Coaching and learning to help international students and professionals here in America. And today I'm going to be talking about networking in the times of social distancing. Um, networking is by far the best way to get a job here in America. Hopefully you've gotten those vibes in the presentation so far. But without actually being able to be physically present with each other, I've gotten so many questions, emails, messages from people saying, Rob, how do I network now um, when everything's virtual? Um, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to help you guys network um, in the time of coronavirus, in this pandemic with social distance, and it's still very possible. And so we're gonna give you guys some great tips and resources to network and still do the best and right way to get a job here in America in a very difficult time. All right, so here's my family. I showed this in the last e-summit, but just a quick glimpse of my wife, Mel, and daughters, Karis and Lucy. I actually lived and worked in India for about eight years. Uh, I lived in Hyderabad, Delhi, and Bangalore. Uh, that picture at the top is, we did naming ceremonies or namkarans for our daughters in the Indian traditional style. So. Karis, her name is Karishma, and Lucy, her name is Lalita, which was lots of fun. And we love helping out with the international students in the Dallas area. I live in uh, Plano, Texas, near the University of Texas at Dallas, and we love hosting international students. We do airport pickups. We've gotten plugged in with the international, or sorry, the Indian Student Association, other international student groups, and volunteer a lot. Love going to their events, and it was those friendships that really um, kind of led to the idea of Chai and Coaching to help create resources to help because we found out there's so many resources to come to America, but very few once you're actually here. And we want to guide you guys to success here in America because I definitely know what it's like to live and work and be on the other side of the world in a very different culture. And we want to help you guys and be, uh, have a good experience in our country here in America. Do we have any office fans? Let me know in the comments if you're an office fan. I think it's been crazy these last couple months. Um, you know, it's good to have some humor. You know, we need to laugh some time. You know, it's been hard uh, with, the virus with the loss of, you know, economic impact, loss of life. But if you're a Office fan, let me know if you have a favorite episode or character. Uh, this is one of my favorite memes. There's been some pretty funny, crazy memes, memes that have been going around, but this is definitely one of my favorite ones. And so, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate some Office humor to keep me uh, positive during this time. Okay, here's this um, in the chat. Uh, have you guys ever experienced this before in your job search. Go ahead and read this meme. You need a job, but they say, well, you gotta have experience, but I can't get experience without a job. We'll work, that's why I'm here, experience. How am I gonna get a job without work experience? You know, it's just kind of catch 22, you know? It's funny, I feel like, you know, a lot of people when they just start out their job search, um, you know, this is a big barrier you face. Uh, it's pretty funny. Um, it's also a hard reality. We're gonna hopefully help you guys kind of bypass this as well. And networking is a great way to get past this, uh, this hurdle. Um, and yeah, thanks to WhatsApp, I'm always updated with all the memes from my international student friends. So I appreciate those. All right, in my last presentation, um, if you guys missed it, the recording's there on YouTube on Chai and Couching. But the big idea I hit was this iceberg analogy that 70 to 80% of the jobs in America are offline. And the um, that's where the vast majority of the jobs are, where very few jobs actually ever get posted online. We're going to do a couple quick polls here and see just kind of where you guys are at. So bear with me real quick. Um, we're going to launch a poll here. So go ahead and fill this poll out for me. Um, I want to know, for you guys who have searched for jobs, how many job applications have you filled out in your job search? So go ahead and do this poll. Would love to see what kind of ranges we get. We'll take about 20 seconds here. Let's see how many job applications people have been filling out 
in their job search. And if you haven't done it yet, go ahead and just put the, the lowest one, one to 50. See, I go ahead and fill out that poll for me real quick. I appreciate that. Also, my wife brought me a delicious iced coffee. So it's keeping me pumped up and energized for you guys. This is tasty. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> All right, 10 more seconds. Um, try and get a few more answers in. We've only got 50%. So yeah, go ahead and answer if you guys haven't answered yet. And I'll share these results. All right, hopefully you guys can see that um, the vast majority um, is in this lower range, but we've got people who filled out in the hundreds, some even in the thousands. Um, in my experience with my international student friends, especially when they are looking for their CPT internships and their full-time jobs. Most of them fill out applications in the several hundreds, 500, 800. I know people who fill out thousands of applications with only getting maybe a couple interview calls back, maybe only getting a couple of job offers. So it's a really huge ratio of um, applications to results. All right, here's one more poll for you guys. I want you guys to answer for me real quick while we're talking about the iceberg. And that is, how many American professionals do you have as friends? And everyone can answer this, um, whether you're a current incoming or graduated student. Um, let me know how many American professionals, uh, not students, people that actually have jobs and are someone that's a friend, not a Facebook friend, not a LinkedIn connection, but someone you've got their phone number, you've hung out with, you know something about them, and they like hanging out with you. A few more seconds here. Let's get everyone's feedback for um, friendships with American professionals. All right, what do you guys think about that? About half of the people that answered, uh, zero. The next majority, only one to 10. And very few people um, you know, had relationships in the double digits of 20, 30, or 30 more. Um, and this is true. Um, a very common message I get this time of year in April and May when people are looking for internships or full-time jobs, you know, I get lots of students asking, Rob, help me. I can't find a job. Help me. And I ask them, how many applications have you filled out? You know, it's 500, 800, 1100, you know, over a thousand. It's crazy. How many applications people are filling out? And then I ask them, how many are American professionals? They know. And many of them say, um, you know, Rob, you're my only American friend. And I'll say, thanks. That's why you don't have a job. Or they'll say, I have some American student friends, but I don't have American professional friends. Or, um, yeah, or very few. Um, but that's where the jobs come from. These offline jobs, these, this lower half of the iceberg, those come from relationships with professionals here in America. And online jobs, you know, only about 20 to 30% of all jobs available in America are online. And, you know, you guys as F1 students maybe only have access to half of those because of all the visa restrictions. And so to really understand this, go back, watch my other presentation, which really helps you understand why applying online is the worst way to get a job and why networking is the best way to get a job. And so let's talk about networking, what it is, and how we do it online. So the first thing is, I think a lot of people, especially international students, who don't come from a background or culture of networking, don't really have a good definition of networking. And I feel like the colleges tell you to network but they don't teach you why or how, and they don't teach you what networking really is. And so I wanna give you guys kind of a de definition of what I think networking is. Networking is a growing community of relationships that gives and receives, adding value with each other. Networking is not a one-way transaction. It's not about what I can get. Just as you have friends and relatives, and you give and receive back and forth through love and respect, the same thing happens with networking here in America. It's about mutual relationships. It's about this growing community that you're building and developing. And it's about adding value to one another. And it's giving and receiving back and forth. And networking is not about what you can get, but it's about what you can give. I feel like people have this mentality of, I'm going to network so I can get a job. But that is the worst mentality because that is selfish and manipulative. And people will smell that. They'll sense it. And they're not going to help you because no one wants to be used. No one wants to be manipulated. Um, People want to be valued and, and benefit from authentic relationships. And so the mentality you should have is not what can I get from my network, but what can I give to my network? And then your network is going to give back to you. And fruitful networking is about blessing and serving others in your network. So my mentality is how can I help the people in my network? And 90% of the time, I'm not the answer of the solution, but I'm connecting people within my network to help each other out. 
If I've got someone who's going to go to India for vacation or a work trip, I'm going to connect them with my friends in those cities to help them out. Or when my friends in Dallas graduate and move to a different city for their full-time job, I connect them with my friends or family in those cities to help them out. If I have a friend who's starting a new business, I probably know nothing about it, but I'm going to connect them to someone who does and help them out. But in order to help people in your network, you have to have a real relationship with them. You have to know who they are, what they're doing, and you have to have an ongoing relationship with them. And then you can hook them up. You can help them. And the more you bless and serve your network, what do you think happens? They want to return it back to you. And that's when people say, you know what, Rob, he's helped me so much. I've, and when something pops up, they'll say, hey, this is really going to help Rob. Or this is a great opportunity for Rob. Or I really want to say thanks to Rob. And the more you give, the more your network is going to give back to you. That's the position you have to start with networking. Another important thing, and this is just my opinion, others might disagree, and that is totally okay, but this is what I think about networking online. Online networking is not real networking. LinkedIn is not real networking because networking requires real relationships. Online networking can start or continue networking relationships. So if LinkedIn start something that results in a real relationship, if it results in a phone call, a Zoom call, a coffee meeting, or an in-person meeting, that's great. Or you've met somebody in person at a conference, at a meetup, at a job fair, then online is a great way to continue that relationship. But if your only relationship is through a LinkedIn connection, that is not real networking because there's thousands of other people that are connections that are begging for jobs and you're just another one of those people. It has to have a real relationship. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments if you guys, if that makes sense to you guys, why well, online networking is not real networking um, and it, why it requires a real relationship. Let me know in the comments if that's making sense to you guys. So if networking is the best way to get jobs in America, then how do we network during social distancing? Um, I think that's the big question. Uh, I think this is really hard for people and I want to give you guys some real great practical examples on how to do this. The first one is meetups. Meetups is one of the best things I tell students to do, and I'm so surprised why they don't go do it. All over DFW, every city in America where colleges are, there's meetups happening with professionals who want to hang out with you and meet you. Look at this. So I get weekly emails from meetup.com. It's a great website and app, um, and they say, for health and safety of our communities, we advise all meetup events to be what? Hosted online. In-person meetups have moved online to Zoom, to Google Hangouts, to whatever other platforms they're using. So meetups are still happening. Uh, there is no excuses for you not to go be a part of a meetup. There was already no excuses to do them in person. I'm always shocked at how many international students I say, hey, go to these meetups. This is where jobs come from. And they don't. And if you don't go to these, it's because you're lazy and it's your own fault. Because this is where jobs come from. Here's some great examples. So this is a brand new group I got an email about. Um, Frisco is one of the suburbs. It's a big tech hub, a big tech community in DFW. And this is a meetup, a professional networking meetup to increase their businesses through structured positive professional referral marketing program. Um, these are people who are business professionals that want to meet you and help you out. That is the whole purpose of this meetup. It's beautiful. There's no secret hidden agendas. Everyone's there for the same purpose, to meet each other and help each other out, including you as an international student. They've got just fun random things like North Texas Outdoor Adventure Ladies, um, people who like to be outside, going on hikes, kayaking, uh, adventure sports. Obviously, that's kind of limited right now, but you can find people doing fun things like that too. That Again, many of them are professionals. You can have this fun, common connection. Um, one thing I like to go to is the LinkedIn local DFW. They have every couple of weeks, they have a meetup. I love taking students there. Again, it's mostly American professionals. They've moved it virtually. So just um, earlier in May, on May 5th, 57 people attended this online virtual meetup. There was a little short keynote speaker, and then people just hang out and talk. Again, this is over 50 people, mostly American professionals, hanging out, getting to know each one another, and also looking at how they can help each other out. I just searched on meetups of what's coming out in the next couple of weeks in my city in Dallas. There's Toastmasters, there's that Frisco business meetings, there's North Texas Professional Alliance weekly meeting, um, Asian American professional Zoom hangout. So if you're an Ameri Asian American professional, this is where you can go and get connected. My buddy Bushan, Bushan is one of my good friends from UT Dallas. 
uh, he's getting to present at a meetup about his journey doing ITM or MIS. Um, there's Toastmasters, which is great for your communication and public speaking skills. Great way to network with professionals. Another thing I found on Meetup is the college, UT Dallas, is putting on free online webinars where the students are presenting or local business professionals and tech gurus are presenting. So you can look into your college for these kind of opportunities to either attend or even present. Imagine if you're a presenter presenting on what you've been learning about in your studies or your job or project, and not just only other students, but other professionals are watching this. Imagine the likelihood of getting a job um, by getting to present at these things or meet local professionals at these kind of online meetups. Meetups are incredible. They're happening online. Go to them. It is only your fault for not joining these and why it's going to be harder for you um, to get a job. This is an incredible way to get a job and it's um, totally your opportunity to gain. Another great opportunity is so many conferences are going online. A lot of the conferences that I was either going to attend or speak at uh, this spring and summer for my job doing cross-cultural training and consulting, some have been canceled, but many have gone virtually. So I'm going to be speaking at a conference later in May um, about people who work with international students, um, professionals, uh, college staff, volunteers, teaching about cross-cultural communication and um, relationship building with international students. And it's going to be virtual. It's really exciting. And so many conferences are online. I literally just Googled tech conferences that have gone virtual, and I found pages and pages and pages of incredible options. I'm gonna show you just a couple of them. I literally just found these 10 seconds on Google. One is NAFSA. NAFSA is this big advocacy group for international students. And they've got several conferences, webinars happening in May and June um, for educators, for students, for professionals. Uh, this is for international students. And so, yeah, these are gonna be great opportunities to learn about these people that are fighting for you to get jobs here in America. Um, Pega World. I know nothing about Pega. I know they're about cloud computing, cloud software. They're a tech, tech stuff, but they're having a free webinar. Their CEO, vice president, and other guest keynote speakers. There's going to be networking and Q&A. So if you're into cloud stuff, this is great. Um, anyone heard of a little company called Microsoft? They're going to be having um, May 19th and 20th. It says at no cost. This is free. Microsoft Build. They're going to have a student zone. Um, there's going to be networking. Again, Microsoft is hosting a free online conference. Go to it. This is going to be a great way to meet Microsoft employees, um, recruiters. And if you're not in a Microsoft, great. Go with Apple. You know, if you're a little bit cooler, if you like, you know, you're more on the dark side, join Apple. I'm a Mac guy. You know, they're going to have this big uh, coding competition. Uh, again, it's, um, let's see here, their first ever Swift student challenge. What a great opportunity to meet people, do a project, get noticed, network, uh, WWDC 20, go join that. Um, apparently there's an international conference on machine learning. Who knew it? It was gonna be this summer in Vienna, Austria. They canceled it and did it in May, or sorry, they did it earlier in March, um, but they had an international machine learning conference. This one already happened, but who knows what other opportunities are like that out there. A couple more good examples on conferences. There's the 2020 Informs Business Analytics Conference. How cool is that? That's, gonna, that's coming up May 18th through 22nd. That's this week. Um, great presentations, keynote speakers. It's going virtual. And guess what? One of the main important parts is networking. They want to have virtual networking. They want to create community. They want to help you. So if you're into analytics, data science, go to this conference. You're gonna meet professionals. You're gonna meet recruiters. You're gonna meet people working in companies. This is where jobs are gonna come from. All right, along with meetups and online conferences, there's webinars. Just a couple days ago, Marcelo Barros, another international student guru and former international student, he hosted a free webinar online about turn your internship into an H-1B job offer. I bet you guys would like to know how to do that. He just posted this on LinkedIn. Um, anyone could have joined. Um, I know Gaurav attended. I shared it with him and he said it was a really great presentation. Back in April, um, you know what happened? A student at Michigan State University in their data science program, he's an American, saw that he had many international student friends and colleagues in his, as his classmates. He saw the cultural differences and how they're struggling to get jobs. So what did he do? He posted his own webinar. He invited me on LinkedIn and other great he got a recruiter from KPMG, 
a recruiter from another big tech company. He got LinkedIn gurus. He got consultants and he got a panel of about eight of us. He got a guy from indeed.com and we all got to present to their data science class to help them in their job journey. And as a student, he hosted his own webinar and I got to talk about cross-cultural communication um, and soft skills to the Michigan State Data Science Department. It was really cool. One girl I follow on LinkedIn and I've connected with a little bit is Anastasia Eason. I think she was also an international student. Now she's a recruiter at Tesla. She's done online webinars and LinkedIn Lives um, talking about the recruiting life cycle. And another really cool webinar that happened recently is the Hope Summit, where her and the recruiting team of Tesla uh, did an online webinar and then Q&A. How cool would it be to go hang out with the recruiting team of Tesla to learn how to go work for Elon Musk at Tesla? Anyone wanna work at Tesla? Let me know in the chat. Uh, I've got some friends who've interned and worked at Tesla and it's a really cool, cool opportunity. Speaking of webinars, there was this really cool webinar that happened last month. Um, some people got together who decided they wanted to help international students. And so, yeah, hope you guys got to attend that one. This is the one that uh, inspired the one happening today. So yeah, webinars are a great way to meet, learn, connect. Um, I've attended other webinars and I've met other people, other professionals that have turned into conversations, emails, or even um, phone calls and Zoom meetings, and even trying coaching videos. So you never know what can happen. All right, student clubs and organizations. Even though the colleges are closed, even though um, you know, classes have been online, student clubs and organizations are a great way to network and get involved. Um, the Travelytics Club, um, it's a combination of travel and data analytics. Um, they just recently had a meeting to do a project. They're gonna do a project and competition um, the next month, um, kind of for the summer. They're gonna have judges, um, they're gonna have opportunities um, to present this. Again, this is great tangible practice and experience uh, to meet other people and present your skills. The UT Dallas Consulting Club, I'm working on a project with them right now. Not only do they do case competitions, kind of like a hackathon, they also do free pro bono consulting work for local DFW businesses. And so they actually do real industry work for local companies um, and they get to actually meet those people. They get to put that on their resume and then build relationships with local business leaders, um, companies, entrepreneurs, and those are where jobs are gonna come from. So getting involved, doing these projects, the Intelligence Analytics Challenge, um, the Intelligence Analytics Society is another UT Dallas club I've worked with. They have a hackathon, they get local industry judges, and a lot of students, not only do you win money for the prize, but you get to meet uh, local industries, uh, local business people, and it's a great way to get jobs is involved in these hackathons and case competitions at the clubs. And especially if you're in a leadership position in these clubs, um, you get incredible relationships and referrals from local businesses in your city. All right, now let's think a little more fun. Um, even just your own hobbies, and you can create your own opportunities uh, for networking. I'm gonna use some examples from my buddy, Harsh Gosar. He recently graduated um, from UT Dallas and is working now in the Dallas area. He was an international student. Um, and so he just took things that he's interested and passionate about and say, hey, let's get people together online and do something about it. So he's traveled a lot. He's kind of a travel guru. Uh, uses his airline points and credit cards and stuff. So he decided, hey, I'm gonna do a little online webinar about uh, airline shopping portals and affiliate marketing, talking about travel and airline points. And so he just posted it on Facebook and LinkedIn and people came and he got to share what he's learned about how to use points and stuff to travel. And then that learned, turned into other things. Once the shelter in place started and we had to start working from home, Harsh is like me, he's very extroverted. We hate being at home and not getting to hang out with our friends. So you can see here is he did a virtual happy hour. So on a Friday, about five or six o'clock after work, he said, hey, let's do a virtual happy hour. Everyone hop on Zoom, grab a beer, grab a coffee, grab something, grab some chai, and let's hang out for an hour and just talk. Let's connect, debrief, you know, talk about our work, talk about how we're doing with you know, working from home and the coronavirus. And he hosted a virtual happy hour online and his friends came, new people came, new people met. That led to a game night. He started hosting game nights on Zoom where there's a lot of games you can play online now. Um, and so people, friends and strangers started joining these game nights. They would do a couple times a week just to do something fun, meet new people. That's where connections and jobs come from. Virtual game night turned into a painting party. So they got people and they did a painting project together on Zoom 
and just for fun, showed the paintings they did. So you guys all have hobbies. You guys all have knowledge. You all have experience. You're all bored at home. Why not get people together, friends, strangers, post it online on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, see who comes. And that's where networking is going to happen. And that's where jobs are going to come from. What kind of, go ahead and share in the chat just what ideas you guys might have about hobbies or just fun stuff that you want to do online. Um, like Hirsch, he did his virtual, you know, happy hour. He did game nights. He did a painting party. He talked about using airline miles and affiliate marketing. Put in the chat, what are things that you're interested or maybe could host online on Google or Facebook or Zoom with your friends or other professionals and get people together and build some relationships. So those are so many, 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 many online opportunities to network and build relationships. That's more than just a LinkedIn connection. So I'm going to give you guys a special bonus to wrap up here. And that is to post stuff on LinkedIn. I noticed that most international students never post anything on LinkedIn. And at minimum, all they do is like stuff and type interested. I'm not going to make you guys raise hands or vote, but think about it. Are you one of the people that doesn't post anything locked in on LinkedIn? Or are you the ones that only like stuff and type interested when someone's trying to give away something or there's a job posting? You need to post stuff because posting stuff makes you stand out, which Sam and Gabriel talked about before. And that's how jobs come to you. I kid you not, guys, I am getting job offers right now during the coronavirus for jobs I've never applied for because I post stuff on LinkedIn. I'll show you some examples. So this was back at the beginning of the year in January. Um, because of my profile it makes me stand out, it's branded well, and um, it's got good SEO. You know, it's got the keywords in my profile of what I do, and my content shows my expertise someone wanting to hire a freelance cross-cultural trainer in the Dallas area. And I was very interested. And then I actually had a couple of emergencies come up with my family and it took me a while to respond, but they still wanted to interview me, even though I wasn't the best at following up and replying. Um, and so we got to do interview calls and just about the time we were gonna start signing contracts and they were gonna hire me to be a freelance consultant for their uh, global transfers um, in their in their job, this is Crown International, um, coronavirus happened. So unfortunately, this cool job opportunity had to be put on hold, but I got a job offer that I was about to start doing as a freelance consultant a few times a month just because of my LinkedIn profile and what I posted online. Another thing is a local business, Tap Innovations, a local tech company, the, one of the founders, John Ragsdale, he started doing YouTube interviews um, to build their brand and bring people on, and they found me on LinkedIn as a local um, kind of entrepreneur. And they interviewed me on their YouTube channel because of my content and connections on LinkedIn. And then I actually got to interview John. I have a Chai coaching video and he gives tips on how to find jobs during the coronavirus time. You should definitely check out his video. He gives some great tips. And so again, they found me on LinkedIn, invited me to be a part of their kind of podcast web video on YouTube. I got a job offer. This one was at the end of April. So, you know, just a few weeks ago, some guy messaged me on LinkedIn um, and was very persistent. You know, it was more in about financing and banking and investing. I don't have much background in it, but this guy wanted my contact. He wanted to interview. He saw my skills, my leadership, um, my communication. Uh, and so, yeah, they really wanted to interview me for this job that I had never applied for just because they saw what I was capable of. And so you guys, when you post stuff on LinkedIn, jobs come to you. That's a way you network. Um, so start posting stuff. Um, I know in our last webinar, eSummit, uh, Roshni and Sondoria gave some amazing tips on LinkedIn. Um, so yeah, LinkedIn's a powerful tool. It's not just about begging people for referrals and jobs. It's about building your brand, building relationships, and showing your unique value, and jobs start coming to you. You guys, thanks so much. Hopefully this gave you some great practical, tangible tips on how to network online during the pandemic and social distancing. And I'm really excited to answer some of your questions now. So um, yeah, let's do some Q&A. Other panelists would love your guys' help fielding some questions from the Q&A. Um, so yeah, if you guys wanna throw some at me, that would be fun. They're all just thanking you right now for, for, the, for the content. It was awesome. amazing, Rob. It was, it was awesome, man. It was mind-blowing. Awesome. So Manish asked, when can we meet and have a cup of coffee or chai? Um, Anytime, <laughs> whenever these uh, social distancing rules go away, but I love meeting with students, having chai, asking your questions. So yeah, 
if you're in the Dallas area, shoot me a LinkedIn message or DM and would love to uh, meet up sometime. So the best networking happens over a cup of chai, in my opinion. Uh, they're asking about Tesla, Rob. Everyone got interested in Tesla, man. <laughs> well, uh, you should have attended that webinar <laughs> 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 or follow their posts. They're always posting. Um, Anastasia, she's great to follow. She, uh, in that resource doc that means Steven Mentor put together, uh, uh, Sam, if you want to bless the people in this webinar and share the link for that doc, there is a link in there for um, how to make a kick-ass resume. And she is one of the co-authors of that. Um, and so I'm sure you can follow up with her there. And uh, yeah, just search them on LinkedIn, follow their stuff. Everyone is looking to give back. So many people are hosting free webinars. And so just, it's all out there. Just search it, look for the hashtags. Um, LinkedIn is a great search engine. Search for the things you want to get involved with in those people. And there's so many opportunities. All right, Shubham asked, how do we interact with random people in a meetup being an introvert? Um, great question. I think one of the important things about networking is not, it's, a lot of people ask, Rob, what do I say? What do I talk about? How do I present myself? And the best networkers don't talk about themselves. The best they networkers ask. are question askers. Mm -hmm. So my goal in networking is not to talk about myself. It's to get to know the other person, to learn from them. Every single person in the world has something to teach you and has something to add value to you. So our job is to find that from them, to learn who they are, what they've done, what's unique, what can they teach you. And when you show interest in them, they're gonna love it. Everyone likes helping others. So it's all about asking good questions, being a learner, being curious, and it's really just an art of asking good questions. That's what real networking really boils down to. And then they're gonna to wanna to get to learn those same things from you. And it's this back and forth relationship and dialogue. And it's a lot easier than you think. Someone asked, not necessarily about networking, but I don't know, I don't know if this is relevant for this one or if you wanna leave it for the last one. They ask ranking or location advantage. Uh, they're talking about ASU versus UTD. Uh, which plays a crucial role for obtaining job opportunities? Yeah, um, there's never one factor you can ever make a decision on for jobs or your college choice. Um, we've got a video on trying coaching about shortlisting universities, but location, college ranking, program ranking, cost of living, um, scholarships, you know, all these things factor into which college you study in and then also job opportunities. Um, so the best thing to do is ask the students in the program at that college. You can easily find them on LinkedIn um, or talk to people working in those companies or working in those cities. They're the people that can give you those answers of what, if you ask people who've never been there or never done that, it, they can't help you. And if they give you advice, don't trust it. Only trust people who've studied at that college, worked at that job. They're the ones that can guide you the most, but you have to do the work. You have to do your own homework and you can't be lazy um, on that if you wanna get good information. So, but yeah, ranking location, it's more than just one factor. It's lots of factors. So unfortunately you can't say it's one or the other. There is no spoon feeding in America. No. Yeah. You have to do it yourself. <laughs> it's a lot of initiative taking. I, I just want to make a quick point here on networking. I think a great um, point that, uh, that proves that networking online is possible. Not necessarily just empty interactions online, but actually building relationships online is possible. The example that, correct me if I am wrong, but I think either than Gaurav and Drew, nobody in this call knows each other, personally. No. I've never met Gaurav, I've never met Drew, I've never met Rob, and I've never met Gabriel, my co-founder. So all of us just met online and we're starting to build a relationship together, we're working together, and uh, we never met each other personally. So this is the perfect proof that yes, it is possible. You just know, need to know how to do it. You just need to know how to transform, use the tools that, that online networking gives you to actually build a real, a real relationship. Yeah, as I mentioned, there's so many opportunities. Uh, I, I could have kept going and showing you guys all the options online to network and learn and connect. Uh, so it's available, it's up to you to go do it. The only reason that you're not gonna network and get a job is you. You are the, you're the obstacle and it's up to you. Um, you have to dive like the iceberg, dive into the water. You have to get wet. You have to take a little risk, but that's where the jobs are. And when you go do that networking, that's when jobs come to you. So it's up to you guys. We encourage you. We challenge you guys. Um, trust us on this. Uh, but the students who do that, who get under the surface, who go to these meetups, who get out of their comfort zone, who get out of the bubble, they're the ones that have no problems getting interviews and job offers. So uh, the opportunity is there. It's up to you guys on what you're going to do with that. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you guys learned a lot 
And yeah, if this video is helpful, let us know in the comments uh, if you want us to do some more online e-summits like this. Uh, we'd love your feedback. And don't forget about our Job Ready in 10 Weeks uh, course this summer. We're so excited. Chai and Coaching and Steven Mentor have been working really hard. We're going to give weekly presentations and we have weekly industry expert guest speakers to help you guys to fill in those gaps that the colleges don't really touch on in your job search as international students. So I hope you guys will let us guide you in your job search journey here in America. Cheers.